Good evening, all you youth out there and all the elders one that's going to peek on us and join us. Today is the first youth service by Facebook. And although we belong to all different kinds of family, we belong to the family of God. And so we're going to sing that song that I taught you many weeks ago, if you were listening with us. And we're going to sing Jesus and the family. And we've got the Oyama family helping me. And they're going to introduce themselves later. But let's sing Jesus in the family. Jesus in the family, happy, happy home. Happy, happy home. Happy, happy home. Jesus in the family, happy, happy home. Suno Kelly, how will it look at go? How will it look at go? How will it look at go? Yes, Suno Kelly, how will it look at go? Father in heaven, we are so thankful that we're part of your big family. And tonight we may be scattered all over, but because Jesus, you're in our hearts, you're in our family, and you're going to be here with us. So, Father, I pray that wherever people are gathered, it will become a holy place because we'll be singing unto you. And we give you thanks and praise for everybody's listening tonight. And we give you thanks and praise for the breath of life and strength. So be with us. We invite you through your Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we're going to have the first part for the little children. And the Oyamas are going to be doing a puppet show called God Brings Deliverance to His People. Take it away. All right, first of all, we just want to greet all of you in, what, where are we greeting then? Facebook, Facebook Live. Live. So we just want to say hello, God bless you, we're excited to be here to minister to all you little kids, and we have a, she's not really little, but she is my grandniece, uh, she's known as Leilani in school. But we call her by her middle name, Kamea. And last name is Patau. Uh, she is my grandniece, like I said. And this beautiful young lady next to me, that happens to be my wife. Her name is Naomi. And my name is Milton. Praise God. We live in Wailuku. And this is our favorite church. Well, we're going to sing a song. Um, you know, it's so important that we have the Bible in our homes. But you know... It's not good if the Bible is just in our homes. We need to read it. Praise God. Isn't that right, Sister Kamel? Yes. Amen. So we're going to sing this song, the B-I-B-L-E. Now that's the book for me. I stand, up, I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Now there's a second verse of this song, and this is how it goes. I'm saved. And we're going to spell that out. I'm S A V E D by grace. grace. And we're going to spell that out also. May I, how do you spell grace? G R A C E. That's correct. I'm saved by grace. The scripture says the B I B L E. Let's do it two mm -hmm. times. Praise God. The B I B L E. And may I? Uh, come out. Oh, look at that. She has the Bible already. Now, if you have the Bible in your home, you should grab it also and kind of wave it as we sing this song. Here we go. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God. The B I B L E. God's Word will never fail. Never fail, never fail. God's word will never fail. No, no, no. I'm S A V E D 
by G R A C E. I'm saved by grace. The scripture says the B I B L E. God's word will never fail. Never fail. Never fail. God's word will never fail. No. 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 One more time. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. God's word will never fail, never fail, never fail. God's word will never fail, no, no, no. I'm S-A-V-E-D by G-R-A-C-E. I'm saved by grace, the scripture says. The B I B L E. God's word will never fail, never fail, never fail. God's word will never fail. No, no, no. No, man. Let me ask you this question: yes. Have I ever failed you before? Uh, yeah. In fact, several times. Several times. Not, yeah. not maybe just one time. Um, I can count maybe three. Oh, about three times. Yeah. That's pretty good. In, uh, uh, How about uh, me? Did I fail you? Well, I, I lost count, actually. But yeah, that's okay. Yeah, well, but I yeah. still love you so much. You know, we just celebrated our, don't say now, 18th anniversary. Very good. Oh, very good. <laughs> that was this past Monday. Praise God. And come here, oh, Lilani. Have I ever failed you before? No. I've never done that. No. Oh, You're praise God. You know, she loves me a lot. <laughs> but, you know, uh, my wife says, which is very true, I did fail her several t- times, and I apologize for that. But you know what? What we just read over here or sang, God's word. Oh, God's word. Never God's me. word, the Bible. May I show them the Bible one more time? God's word, the Bible, will never fail. If you've got a problem, get into the Bible. Yes. God will deliver you through Amen. the scriptures in there. He's done it for me many, many times. You know, there's another song that we like to do. Um, it's called, Praise the Lord, I'm a Christian. Now, I think you're probably going to uh, recognize this song. It's the tune to Pearly Shells. Now, when we do sing that song, there's an echo part. I'll take the lead. And then Kamea and my wife, Naomi, will be echoing. So if you kind of know uh, how this song goes, please join us. Oops, sorry. Okay, praise the Lord. Now, in order to be uh, sing this song um, truly, you've got to do one thing first. Uh, what is that, Naomi? Before we sing this song? Yeah, it says, praise the Lord, I am a Christian. How can you sing this song unless... you got to be a Christian. Right, and how do you do that? Ask Jesus to come into your heart. That simple? That simple. Just ask him to come into your heart and take control of your life. You know, I'm so glad because if it uh, took riches, I wouldn't be a Christian. <laughs> Praise God. All I have to do is that. receive Christ into our lives. Come out, you have done that, right? Good. Praise God. Let's sing this song. Praise the Lord, I'm a Christian. Praise the Lord, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Singing I'm away. Singing I'm away. Happy all the day. Happy all the day. Oh, I love him. Oh, I love him for the love he gave to me. Praise the Lord, he is my everything. I once was lost in sin, to Jesus came and said, come on to me. I followed him, took up my cross, and now praise God I'm free. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, singing on my way, singing on the way. Happy all the day, happy all the day, how I love him, how I love him. For the love He gave to me, praise the Lord, He is my 
everything. One more time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Singing on the way. Singing on the way. Happy all the day. Happy all the day. How I love Him. How I love Him. For the, the love He gave to me. Praise the Lord. He is my everything. I once was lost in sin. To Jesus came and said, Come unto me. I followed Him. Took up my cross. And now, praise God, I'm free. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Singing on my way. Singing on my way. Happy all the day. Happy all the day. How I love Him. How I love Him for the love He gave to me. Praise the Lord. He is my everything. Praise the Lord. recognize that tune so now every time you hear pearly shells you're gonna you're gonna say to yourself you know there's another version to that song it's called praise the lord i'm a christian but like my wife said in order to really sing this song from your heart you've got to ask jesus to come into your heart then you can sing this song and you you know what the promise of god says when we receive christ into our life you know the bible says that he has a mansion for us in heaven. One of these days, we're all going to have to live this earth. Now, I hope I don't leave tomorrow, but you know what? If I do, I'm not afraid because I receive Christ into my life. I'm a Christian so that I am going to be in the presence of our God and King, and I am going to be living forever in heaven. That's his promise. And you, that could be your um, promise also. All you've got to do is just say, Jesus, come into my heart this day. And you, you don't have to be a grown-up and adult like myself. You could be a little child, as little as a few years old, as long as you understand who Jesus is. Now, for you little ones, there's a song that we love to sing. It's called Silver and, and Gold, Gold Have, have I None. Uh -huh. But such as I have, give I thee. Oh, and this is so powerful. What is that next line, Naomi? In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Of Nazareth, rise up and walk. You know, your little kids or older kids also. If you're feeling down. Now, my wife had a hard day at work, but she knew that this was important. So, as she sings this song, she realized that the promise of God says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So, if you're not feeling too good tonight, wherever you are, you know what? You can say this, uh, sing it with your heart, and claim that, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Now, there's some motions for you little kids. You're going to love this. Okay, so um, when we go to that part where it says, he came walking and leaping and praising God. Well, if you can walk, you can go. He came walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, if you know of someone who is not feeling well, you can go to that person and say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And you know what? If you say it from your heart, if you believe it from your heart, I believe God's going to do a miracle. So let's sing this song. Silver and gold have I not, and I'm so glad. <laughs> because like I said, if I had a lot, of, I don't have silver and gold in my house. But I have Jesus Christ, and that is the main thing. That is more precious than any money that I could ever earn. But this is, song is a beautiful song. This is found in Acts 3, 1 to 10. And the story goes that Peter and John were walking. They were going to go to a place to pray. But there was this man who was lame. 
And all he wanted was them to give him some money so he could buy some food. Of course, Peter and John said, you know, I don't have any food or money, but what I do have is more precious than that, is rise up and be healed. And this is what this song is all about. So let's sing this song. And do the motions by following Kamea and my wife, Naomi. Peter and John went to pray. They met a lame man on the way. He asked for alms and held up his palm. And this is what Peter did say. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, a Nazareth, rise up and walk. Okay, here we go. He came walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. In the name of Jesus Christ. A Nazareth, rise up and walk. One more time. Peter and John went to pray. They met a lame man on the way. He asked for alms and held all his palms. And this is what Peter did say. Silver and gold have I done. But such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, a Nazareth, rise up and walk. He came walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. In the name of Jesus Christ, a Nazareth, rise up and walk. You know what? As we were singing this song, a thought came to me. You know, you little kids, you have a lot of power in, in you. In fact, Jesus said in the word that suffer the, not the little children to come unto me. You know why? But you have faith that is so powerful and strong. You know why? Because when you pray, you don't think about, oh, I wonder if this person can be healed. But this is why I, I, I believe God really wants to use you. Now, if you have someone in your mind right now that needs a touch in the body. Maybe they're sick, or maybe they fell down. Your friend, or oh, they need love, or oh, they're experiencing uh, some kind of heartache or something, whatever it is. You know what? Let's all pray for them right now. And if you see that person in front of you, do as this song says. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And I believe God's going to do it. Let's do a short prayer. Father, we just thank you so much for this little kiss who believe in you, Lord. You said in your words, suffer not the little children to come unto me. Pray. They have faith. They're so powerful. And Father, if there's someone they have, they have, they have in mind that needs a touch, Father, they reclaim it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Praise God. God, we're going to do one more song, okay? This song is called the B-I-B. Oh, we did that song, right? Yeah, we did. Oh, praise yeah. God. Boy, I tell you, hallelujah. You got to excuse. I'm 66 years old, um, but praise God. I'm closer to heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, did you want to do your game now? or? Oh, okay, so we, in a tree, have a treat for you tonight. And I'm going to ask my wife to come. And she's going to open everything up. It's going to be a skit, and I hope you enjoy it. Praise God. Well, hello, everyone. I'm so glad to be a part of uh, tonight's service for the children. You know, Jesus loves little children so much. Actually, when I read the Bible, there's a part where he actually had them gather around him when he was on this earth. And he loved talking to them and hearing what they had to say. And to him, how I, how I got it was, to Jesus, children were just as important as adults. 
and um, they should in no way be be um, belittled or um, disrespected um, because they're precious in his sight. And uh, tonight we're going to be doing a, a little puppet show for the little ones, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Good evening, everyone. I'm so glad you could join us this, on this Friday Youth Service. I'd like to introduce you to two of my wonderful friends, Toby and Lulu. Toby and Lulu, can you come out and greet everyone in Facebook land? Oh, hello, my friends. Hello, good everyone on Facebook land. Yes, hello everyone. I love you on Facebook land. <laughs> Hi Naomi, I haven't seen you for such a long time. I really missed you. Me too. Ever since the awful pandemic happened, we haven't been able to see each other. I miss both of you very much also. I see you're both wearing masks. That's very good and responsible of you. We have to be sure to keep our distance and protect ourselves and others. We don't want to catch the virus and get sick. I know. I can't go anywhere but stay at home and go to church. It makes me sad and a little and afraid because I don't want to catch the virus and get sick. Me too. This pandemic is so awful and evil. I understand, but that's why we have a wonderful and powerful God who will protect and deliver us from every evil thing. Really? You mean God is more powerful than this awful virus? He sure is, Toby. That reminds me of a story in the Bible of how God delivered his people from an evil ruler called Pharaoh in a land called Egypt. The Israelites was held captives as slaves for over 400 years. 400 years? That's almost how, as old as Pastor Barbara and Auntie Carol. <laughs> no, Lulu, they're not that old. Anyway, getting back to the story, while in captivity in Egypt, the Israelites prayed every day that God would deliver them from the hands of Pharaoh. Pharaoh hated God and God's people. So did God answer their prayer? Of course he did, Toby. God always answers prayers whenever people are in trouble. That's right, Toby and Lulu. God did answer their prayers and used the man whose name was Moses to go to Pharaoh and tell him to free the Israelites, God's people. God told Moses to tell Pharaoh, I am that I am sent you. That's a funny name. Why did he have to say that? Yeah, why didn't Moses just say, God sent me? I believe God wanted Pharaoh to know that God is more powerful than anything that this world has. More powerful than this coronavirus? Yes, more powerful than this awful virus. So did Pharaoh listen to Moses and let the people go free? No, he didn't, Toby. Pharaoh was very stubborn and would not listen to Moses. So God had to send plagues to teach Pharaoh a lesson for disobeying God's command. Naomi, what's a plague? Lulu, that's when you place your hand over your heart and say things like, I pledge allegiance, I pledge no, allegiance. No, Toby, to no, no, that's a pledge, Toby. Oh, oh. A plague is like a disease or a disaster that affects people or the land. 
God had to send ten plagues because Pharaoh refused to obey God after each plague. What kind of plagues did God send to Pharaoh for not obeying? Well, some of the plagues, Lulu, were toads and flies everywhere and in their homes and boils on people's bodies, darkness over the land, and even turned the wa- he even turned the water into blood so they could not drink it. That should have got Pharaoh's attention. I would have obeyed after the first plague and for sure by the second one. Me too, yuck. I hate toads and I can't stand the flies all over my food and I'm afraid to go out in the dark sometimes. You're right, both of you. Pharaoh was so stubborn that it wasn't until God sent the tenth plague that made Pharaoh release the Israelites from Egypt, just as God commanded him to do, to do so in the beginning. Naomi, what was the tenth plague that made Pharaoh obey God? Well, the tenth plague that God sent was that every firstborn male, whether it be an animal or human being, would die by an angel of death that God sent. And unfortunately, Pharaoh did have a firstborn male son who died at the hand of the angel. But that seems so mean. Well, Lulu, it seems mean, but remember, God did give Pharaoh many chances to obey him, but each time he refused. That's how God is with us also. He gives us many chances to turn to him. Whenever we do things that are wrong, he doesn't want to hurt us. He is a loving and forgiving God. So is that how the story ended? Everyone lived happily ever after Because Pharaoh let God's people go? Not quite. That is only part of how God delivered his people. What do you mean? Didn't God deliver his people from the hands of the evil Pharaoh? Yes, Lulu. But after Pharaoh released God's people, he got very angry at God. So he got his army and chased after Moses and the Israelites. He wanted to kill them. Now, here is where it gets very interesting. In order for the Israelites to be safe, they had to cross a raging Red Sea. But behind them was Pharaoh and his army. Oh no, did the Israelites get captured? No, they didn't. They did get to the other side of the Red Sea though. But I don't understand. Did they have a boat that they could go on to cross the Red Sea or maybe swim across to the other side? No. You see, whenever we're in trouble, God always has a way of escape when there seems to be no way. He told Moses to stretch forth his hand toward the Red Sea. And when he did, God parted the sea. The Israelites could now cross the sea on dry land. But what about Pharaoh and his army? Did they cross the sea also? Yeah, and so what happened to them? Well, Pharaoh's army did chase after the Israelites by trying to cross the Red Sea. But as soon as God's people got to the other side, to safety, God caused the sea to close and all of Pharaoh's army drowned. And Pharaoh was watching all of this and realizing that the God of the Israelites truly is more powerful than any evil force. There's a scripture found in Psalm 46.1 that speaks about God delivering his people. Lulu, would you like to quote that scripture And Toby, can you get your guitar ready uh, as we sing the song, 
How did Moses cross the Red Sea? Okay, I'll get my guitar ready. The scripture says in Psalm 46, 1, God is very present help in times of trouble. Thank you, Lulu. That scripture reminds us that God will always deliver his people every time we ask him to. And Toby, are you ready with your guitar? I'm getting ready. Maybe you can tell how the song goes. Okay. Well, as Toby gets his guitar ready for us to sing this song, I'd like to let all the children and everyone actually who's watching us right now, I want you to know that God knows where you are and he knows you by name and he's waiting for, for you to talk with him, letting him know all about you. Uh, even though he knows about you already, he wants you to uh, have faith in him, trust in him, and ask him for any type of deliverance you may need. Uh, this little play was just to remind us that God is always on our side. And he loves us so much that he's willing go, to go through a lot of a lot of things to help us to come to him. Um, and uh, as we're waiting for Toby to set up, oh, it looks like Toby came up with his guitar already. And uh, Lulu, are you ready to sing this song? I am so ready, and I hope the little kids love this song about Moses. He didn't have a boat, he didn't have an airplane, but he had God. And this is how it goes. Okay, let's sing that song. How did Moses cross the Red Sea? How did Moses cross the Red Sea? How did Moses cross the Red Sea? How did he get across? Did he swim? No, no. Did he roll? No, no. Did he jump? No, 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 no. Did he drive? No, no. Did he fly? No, no. How did he get across? God blew with his wind. Puff, 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 puff. He blew just enough. Nuff, 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 nuff. And through the sea he made a path that sound. He got a cross. Let's sing it again. How did Moses cross the Red Sea? How did Moses cross the Red Sea? How did Moses cross the Red Sea? How did he get across? Did he swim? No, no. Did he roll? No, no. Did he jump? No, 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 no. Did he drive? No, no. Did he fly? No, no. How did he get across? God blew with his wind. Puff, 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 puff. He blew just enough, 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 enough. And through the sea he made a path. That's how he got across. Well, thank you, Toby and Lulu. I sure enjoyed the, this wonderful time with both of you. Let's remind our friends in Facebook land that God will always deliver us in any situation we may face by just putting our trust in him and asking him, like it says in the scripture that Lulu said, Psalm 46, 1, God is a very present help in the time of trouble. Toby and Lulu, let's all say goodbye to our friends in Facebook land and say we love you and see you real soon. Goodbye, Goodbye friends, friends, and we, we love, love you. you. See you again next time. Bye. Bye. Well, that ends our puppet show. Um, and I'd like to know 
introduce Pastor Barbara to you who has a, a something special for our older kids, starting with the game. Well, let's give a hand wherever you are to the Oyama family. That was wonderful that they put it together in such a short time. But all you families, I want you to feel challenged and do something like this or a skit or whatever to be featured on our Friday night service. Now, we've been missing going out, as Camille said, and we miss the ocean, we miss our picnics. Dora Faith was our former name, and we used to be called Dora Food. But now we're Faith in Jesus Church, but we still like picnics. And so for, you know, um, Memorial Day, we ha have a picnic, we kick off the summer, and then, uh, of course, 4th of July, we had a picnic, and then Labor Day, we have a picnic, but all these time, we could not have a picnic because of the COVID. So I thought maybe some of you are kind of anxious to, um, you know, how many of you ever went to like a canoe race or some kind of boat race? Well, I thought we could have some volunteers, and we're going to have a boat race here and pretend that we're out in a picnic, because when we do have a picnic, I want all of you to come out, and we're going to do some games, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So do I have any volunteers for my boat race? Anybody want to oh, volunteer? Yes, I'm, oh, I'm here. I'm oh here. I hear some people that are excited. Well... Okay, now this is a big competition, and I'm going to put your boat there, and I put your boat here, and what you need to do is, wait, just look at me, don't get anxious, I don't want anybody to cheat, okay, don't cheat, okay, and so, you know, what you need to do is get as close as you can, and the goal, Kamea, is to get your Oh, across here before Uncle Milton has his come here, okay? So you have to blow. You know, you were talking about the Red Sea and God blew the sea open and the children of Israel went down, okay? So I want you to practice blowing and then you're going to blow your ship and this ship might be sinking. Uh, so we're going to keep it like this and I'm going to say... On your mark, oh, don't cheat. When I say on your mark, get set. Then you come as close as you can, okay? On your mark, get set. Come closer. Ready, go! <laughs> oh, you folks did not blow it. <laughs> That's my joke. When I was younger, I played a clown at one time. So you can wipe yourself, and I need to wipe myself too. <laughs> but, you know, we have a lot of fun. Give me a little towel too. I didn't know. That. That's what I get for doing this. I got wet too. But, you know, in our church, we have a lot of fun. And I'm going to do this for the older kids now, okay? I'm going to change character. Hey, you guys, you guys know that there's a Pigeon English Bible? Yeah, there's a Pigeon English Bible, and tonight I'm going to tell you one story from the Pigeon English Bible. And if you like following your regular Bible, you can, and it's in Luke chapter 15. And it's the story of one lost sheep. I'm going to tell you this story tonight, okay? So if you know the Bible, then just listen to my Pigeon English Bible, okay? I'm going to read them to you. What do you think? If one of you guys get 100 sheep, but one sheep still lost, you're going to leave the 99 inside the boonies and go look for that one sheep that's still lost, yeah? When you find them, you feel real good inside, and you put them on top of your shoulders, and you go home, and you tell all your friends and the people next door, hey, come, party with me. Because I went to go find my sheep that was lost. And you go throw a big party. I tell you, same thing. God and the angels up in the sky feel more good inside 
Because one bad guy that come, sorry for all the bad kind of stuff he will do and pow do them. And when cause all the other bad guys who will think they no good, come sorry too. You know what? God was some happy. And he went through one party in heaven with all the angels. And they went go sing a happy song. You like make God happy tonight. Bow your head. Bow your head. We're going to pray. We're going to ask God to forgive us our sin. We're going to thank him for Jesus went on the cross. We're going to say, God, I was that lost sheep that you went come find. Here I am. I want you to throw a big party in heaven so I can give myself to you. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, if there's somebody here that's been a lost sheep and did not know they were lost or did not know their way to heaven, you've given them this opportunity tonight to know how very precious they are, that for one lost sheep, you would leave the 99 and you would go and get them. And tonight, some are coming in. They're going to leave their bad ways and they're going to come and say, I'm sorry. Say, sorry, Jesus. Sorry for all my bad stuff I wouldn't do. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you. Thank you for giving me new life. I like bring all my friends to you, so help me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I give myself to you, and I know you're having a big party in heaven tonight because I came home to you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And you know, it doesn't matter what language we use to come to Christ, what language we use to understand God's love, but you know, it's the same everywhere. God loves each one of you. I don't care if you're four years old. I heard recently there was a four-year-old that said, I want Jesus in my heart. And I don't care if you're older. You might be 99 like Uncle Milton, oh, well, he's not quite 99, but he's pretty old. And maybe he never did come to the Lord, and he's wanting to come to the Lord. Or you may be a teenager. And I want to talk to especially the teenagers. You know that game? At first, it looks so much fun. Satan makes sin like it's so much fun. And we get attracted to it and we come closer and closer. And we get so attracted to it and we want to play his game. But you don't know the trap that he has set. And you get involved. And then it crashes. And you realize the trick he played on you. Satan is a deceiver. Everything that he waves in front of you, if down in the heart you feel like it's wrong, you need to stay away. The Bible says sin is attractive only for a season, only for a while. Like a man, Uncle Milton, you know, they were so excited about this game, not knowing that the deceiver, me, kind of like playing that deceiver part, I rebuked that in Jesus' name. It was kind of fun. I got them close. I got them real close. I got them really close. And then I deceived them. But, you know, I think the lesson I can learn, too, is that the, the deceiver gets wet, too. Okay? But I just didn't pray that tonight some of you have come to realize that no matter what situation you are, like the skit, the puppet show said, when you're backed up in the wall, when there's that sea that you need to cross because the enemy is chasing you and you come to that sea and there seems to be no way, 
Just know this. Whatever situation you're in, in John chapter 14, verse 6, it says, Jesus says, I am the way. That's why we say you need to be in Jesus because you don't have to find the way if you're in Jesus. He is the way. And you can go through whatever sea, fire, mountains, valleys. Remember we talked about it the other night? That he says when you go through the rivers and the waters, you will not drown. You go to the fire, you will not burn. Why? Because Jesus is the way through it. I want you to bow your heads in prayer. I hope you had fun. We want to make the children happy. But there's some real truths tonight. God loves every one of you. Don't forget that. And we do too. And we are a family here at Faith in Jesus Church. And when this pandemic is over... I know you're all going to come. And on Friday nights, the young people and the youth will have so much fun. We usually have dinner together when we don't have the pandemic. So we're going to have a lot of fun then. But until then, we're going to trust in Jesus to take us through one day at a time. I'd like for all the characters tonight to come around me. We're going to close and... We're going to sing this song, and it may be our theme closing song, about God's love. You know, you may not feel safe. You may not feel like, you know, you're comfortable. But let me tell you what, God's love is like a circle. And we're going to pray. Father, I thank you for this evening, and I know that you're filling our hearts with your love, all of us need your love, need your loving kindness, need your mercy. Lord, we need your strength. So at the end of this service, I pray your Holy Spirit will fill each one, touch them all. Touch them all, Lord. The lonely ones, the thirsty ones, those who want to learn more about you, touch them. Meet their needs. Give them the desires of their heart, Lord. You said if we delight in you, you'll give us the desires of our heart. So do that, Lord. We thank you for your love, and we're going to celebrate now by singing that song together. In Jesus' name, amen. God's love is like a circle. And I don't know if I can remember the motions to it, but it has some simple motions. God's love is like a circle, a circle big and round. And when you see the circle, no ending can be found. And so is the love of Jesus. It goes round eternally, forever and forever. I know that he loves me. Let's sing it together. God's love is like a circle, a circle big and round. And when you see a circle, no ending can be found. And so the love of Jesus.
And I hope you love the people around you. We certainly love you. God bless you. And don't forget that Jesus loves you. And we'll meet again on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Have a wonderful, peaceful evening. And may the presence and love of Jesus be with you wherever you are. We love you. God bless you. Aloha.